Welcome to another episode of Nathan Builds Robots. Today I wanted to go over some things about the K2 Plus that some people have called me out for, um, for not bringing up in my video. So I guess the main thing that people complain about with this machine is that it lacks originality. Um, and sure, yeah, they did take a lot of design inspiration from a lot of different projects and companies. So, you know, you got this AMS system up here that's clearly just a Bamboo Lab AMS system. You've got these, uh, the whole motion system essentially from the position of these fans to the uh, position of the lead screws and the, the rods there. And this gantry being a square tube using a linear rail located on the top and having everything attached like that. That's uh, just lifted off of a lot of open source designs, such as the Voron, the original Voron. That's how the Z axes were set up on the original Voron machine. And also the uh, location of those ducts where it's blowing fan from the sides into the middle of the bed. That's pretty much lifted directly off of a VZ bot as is the position of that linear rail across the top. You know, just using a hollow steel tube with a linear rail straight across the top. Very VZ bot inspired. Um, also, you've got the general position of the poop chute in the back there. And basically, uh, here you can see it. That's basically exactly the same way that the Bamboo Lab X1C and the P1 series do it. But if it ain't broke, don't fix it. If you look in the back of the machine, you can see the way that the poop chute and the wiper assembly works. Again, very similar to the Bamboo Lab machines. And uh, even the filament cutter, that's also very familiar looking if you've ever worked on a Bamboo Lab machine. So yes, there are a lot of design elements that Creality have borrowed um, using this machine. Also, the whole user interface that does kind of look like the X1C's user interface. I'm not sure, someone maybe more familiar could tell me whether this, um, this whole system here looks similar to how uh, Bamboo Lab have it, have it set up for their AMS system. But you know, it may or may not be a copy there. Also Creality started to ship these little things, uh, little sample swatches of all the different filaments that they offer. Yeah, you know, uh, I think the Bamboo Lab A1 series started doing that where they shipped the little sample swatches so you can see what the exact filament colors look like. But hey, it's a good idea, so I uh, can't really blame them for doing that. I mean, does Bamboo Lab have a patent on little filament swatches? I mean, we've seen this at the paint store or if you're picking out anything at the hardware store, usually they'll have little samples like that. So um, it's a good idea. They copied pretty much everything about it, but I like having my little samples here so I can see what colors we have available. Also, uh, when it comes to the these filament spools, having a little RFID tag inside of here. That little RFID tag is used to tell the machine what filament is loaded up into the device. Uh, I believe Stratasys has a patent on that technology, and uh, Bamboo Lab is actually being sued by Stratasys over that, and Creality has copied that from Bamboo Lab, so I don't know how that's all going to work out, but it is interesting, isn't it? But yeah, you know, everything else in there is somewhat original. I think the frame being as sturdy and solid as it is, uh, it's a really unique construction, very well built, super heavy duty and I think they did a good job with that. Um, but who knows, maybe there's some kind of industrial machine that had that kind of layout before and they just more or less copied it. So maybe Creality doesn't deserve many points for originality here, but the way that they've integrated this into an affordable, really high spec, really capable machine that's been working reliably for me, I think is something to be admired. And uh, Hopefully some other companies will step up their game and start delivering bigger printers. And you can hear this table shaking around a little bit. Again, this machine is heavy, so you're gonna need a nice strong table for it. So if anyone wanted to pick one of these up, if you wanted a super large format, high-speed, multicolor printer like this, the sales just opened up for it. 
you can go to Creality's website. I'll leave a link in the description below. But so far in my usage of this machine, I've been really happy with it and I could recommend it. Um, also, I got a little bit more information about when these are shipping. So according to Creality, all of the pre-orders for this machine that were placed earlier this year should be shipped by December 9th. And anyone who places an order now should get their machine um, starting December 10th and into the new year. And just depending on how many orders they get, that might get pushed back further. But they're cranking these machines out and printing them at the factory. And if you order one, you'll get it within about a month or two. Also, I wanna go over some infrared footage that I captured of the machine. You can see we're looking at the front pane of glass right now, but you can't see what's inside because that glass is opaque to infrared. So we're just getting a reading of the temperature of the glass itself. When we open it up, we can see a couple prints going on in there. They're ABS with glass fiber reinforcement. So it's got the chamber heater on and the bed is pretty hot. Looking at this side panel, you can kind of see where the heated bed is and where air is blowing up against it on the inside, and that transmits to the outside in a uh, difference of temperature. But also, interestingly enough, this chamber heater is getting up to about 120 degrees Celsius, and uh, only one of the two chamber heater elements is active. The other one is blue, which is like room temperature, while one is hot. So I wonder if I'm not uh, requiring a ton of heat so it's not turning both of those heating elements on. Right here, I'm trying to look at the high voltage electronics so I can get a view of those solid state relays. The Chidi Tech X Plus 4 was having some issues with the relays overheating and melting, but I don't think that'll be a problem on this machine. I couldn't see anything that was exceptionally hot in there. And they've got a blower fan cooling off everything in that region. So uh, the electronics seem to be much cooler and much better managed on this machine. If we look up top at the motors, you can see the motor is about 60 degrees Celsius. That's not overly hot, so I'm not really worried about that there. And uh, this is interesting. When you look at the touch screen, it's actually completely blank because it's displaying information in the visible spectrum, not in the infrared spectrum, so you can't really see it. Okay, and uh, you can kind of see an overall temperature distribution of the bed. It looks pretty even. Um, down below, you can see that chamber heater with one active element. So far, this has been super intuitive to use, this CFS system. I just go to print my next part that I want to make. It automatically assigns the closest matched colors. I'm not sure how it does that, but you can see I have blue loaded up here, and I want to switch that out with some black filament. So let me just go ahead and remove this one. We'll put our black filament in here. And I'm doing this one-handed, so it's a little unwieldy, but we'll get it to work. Just feed the black filament in. Now this machine should be able to read that RFID tag and associate the correct filament to the, uh, the right material here. So if we look at the, uh, the material recognizer screen, I'm not sure exactly what to call this, but this should change from blue to black when it recognizes that material has changed over. There we go, I just had to tap the home screen to refresh it. Maybe that's something they could improve in firmware. But anyways, now we'll go ahead and print this and it automatically associates all the correct colors. And we're just gonna go ahead and click print. Pretty easy. So thanks for watching this episode and uh, that's all I've got for now.